Emily and I make videos about minimalism, organization and family life. Today I'm going to talk to you about two topics. Firstly, what we carry in our nappy bag on a day-to-day -day basis and secondly, how we manage cloth nappies when we are out and about. As I know a lot of people find that idea really intimidating and I'm here to simplify it. Um, nappy bags. When we started as parents, when we had Violet, we had a giant side carry nappy bag. I'm gonna insert a picture up here that we took to the hospital with us and we used as like a labor bag with all of my stuff in it. Incidentally, 95% of that didn't get touched. Um, and then, which we tried to use when we got home with her. And within like two weeks, we realized that it was completely impractical. It was massive, it was bulky, it had a really long strap and that you were supposed to hang over um, the handle of your pram, but then we realized that that's actually really dangerous because the pram tips over. It didn't tip over with the baby in it, but not a good idea. So I went to my wardrobe and I pulled out this. This is a status anxiety backpack. It's just a small leather backpack um, that I already own. It's not a nappy bag. It's not sold as such, but this is what we started out using. And I'm like, yeah, great. Really practical, really easy, but shouldn't I have a proper nappy bag? So, as I always do, went online and started researching all the best options and I ended up buying this. This is the Skip Hop Greenwich bag. I think the color is rose. The color is absolutely gorgeous. This thing is great. It has, you know, a, a special zipped compartment with a change mat in it. It's got a side pocket that's supposedly for bottles if you use bottles. It's got clips at the side to hook it onto your pram without falling over because it, it hangs in nice and close. Loads of pockets. But if you carry this all day, you are going to feel like a turtle lugging around a shell because the thing is massive. And the problem with having a massive space, if you're like me anyway, you just go right ahead and fill it up. So after carrying that for a week or so, I realized that that was not the right choice either. I was stuffing it full of stuff that we didn't need and I was making and carrying around this bag something of a chore. So with that in mind, we went back to this and this is where we have stayed for the past 18 months. So I'm gonna take you through what we carry on a day-to-day -day basis, how we keep this tiny little bag stocked so that we can just grab it before we walk out the door. It doesn't require packing and repacking particularly. Um, and the items that are really necessary when you are doing cloth nappies out and about. So starting with the bag itself, um, it's possibly about 30 or so centimeters tall. It's not very big. We have a bag tag. This is a personalized one from Arlo & Co. It's just a wooden disc. It took ages to get here, um, but it was only about $15 and it's really cute. The bag itself is super comfortable to carry. And even though it's leather, it's actually not very heavy. So I'm gonna start in the front pocket. We keep rusks. These are her only packaged snack option. They're not even a snack. They're basically just a um, distraction when she's being whiny or we're waiting somewhere or we are waiting for a meal or she's teething or whatever. Zinc based sunscreen. We don't use chemical sunscreens. This is a physical one. It's really thick and difficult to spread, but you've got to do what you've got to do. If you put a hand sanitizer, obviously prior to COVID, we only used this if we were somewhere where we couldn't change our, wash our hands after we changed a nappy, like a park. Now hand sanitizer is everywhere you go. And then in the main compartment, oh, this bag has two little slots on the side, which are actually the perfect size for my card holder, which is my wallet and my phone on the other side. So love that. In our main compartment, we have our wash bag and nappy mat, which I'll go through later when I talk a bit about changing nappies. Sun hat, silicon bib. I don't remember the brand of this one, but I really like it because it squishes up very small and is really easy to wipe for when our little messy person is having a meal. Change of clothes, obviously it changes with the season. Right now it's leggings and a long sleeve shirt and a light jacket, which folds up really nice and, and small. Then with, there's a, a slot in the back of the bag. It's just like a fabric pocket. This is for the stuff we don't use very often. I have a folding grocery bag. This is stainless steel cutlery set. If we're somewhere where they are using disposable cutlery or it's not available, I try to avoid that. So that's got, this is seed and sprout. It's got a straw, chopsticks, knife, fork and spoon. They're all stainless steel and a napkin. 
Can't say it gets a lot of use these days, but it's good to have and it's tiny. And then we have a pair of socks for me, a pair of socks for Violet and our play center loyalty card. I learned the hard way that you have to wear socks to a play center. I honestly had no idea. Um, and I made that error and then had to buy their really gross, bright, ugly branded socks. So I won't be making that mistake again. So, I mean, not that these are my favorite, but anyway, they're in there. And then we have our little toy pouch. This is a makeup bag. I think it's, yes, yeah, from Sports Girl with a zippered top to keep everything contained. I keep toys in here that kind of don't necessarily belong to a category or that we have duplicates of, like um, the little instruments that are in here. These are toys that can be used individually. Um, but to be honest, she kind of loves playing with the zip on the pocket the best. So we have a couple of board books. These are tiny little Harry McClary ones. They don't have you know, a whole lot of detail in the story, but they're portable and she kind of will just talk to herself about the pictures. She's obsessed with ducks, so that works. Wooden maraca, wooden castanets, her sunglasses. These were just in the bathroom, but she kind of was driving me nuts by constantly insisting that I wear them and they're just not my style. So I hid them in the nappy bag. Little uh, kaleidoscope, this is Maida, which is a really gorgeous wooden toy brand. They make lots of spinning tops and stuff. My sister got this overseas um, and brought it back. Violet can't close one eye and look through it yet, but she, she understands that you look through it. So she walks around sort of pretending to be a pirate. Little ladybird spinning top also from my sister. Violet's actually pretty good at spinning this, surprisingly. And the Grimm's Small Spirelli. Really beautiful sort of concentration calm down toy. Mm, I think she's up. She can't use it very well yet, but she's getting there. And in the meantime, I like to use it. to that we add obviously my daily essentials which are basically my card holder that I use as a wallet, keys, phone which is being used, headphones and then for Violet um, sippy cup this is the cherub baby glass one she doesn't drink out of plastic with a silicone lid to it there's also a straw version of this they're really good and if we're going over a snack time a stainless steel lunchbox this is the ever eco double compartment one we have a few different configurations depending on where we're going and what we're taking and so on. And then obviously at, um, at the moment we will often add a cardigan or a jumper. Um, I tend to take those off her before putting in, her in the car seat so that she's not too bulky and she doesn't get too hot. So the second major part of this video was how we deal with nappy changes for cloth nappies while we're outside the house. I know a lot of people really struggle with the idea of using cloth outside of their home. You know, it's out of your comfort zone. You don't quite know how to deal with wet or dirty nappies. And the idea of just being able to throw a disposable away probably seems really easy and, you know, to some degree it is. But I would argue that combining part-time cloth and part-time disposable actually makes things a lot harder for you. If you can find one really good wash routine, really good nappy routine and stick to it, you're gonna find that you have a lot less thought processes. You don't have to decide, are we doing cloth here? Are we doing disposables here? What do I need to take? What am I gonna do with all the, the different things? And it's not gonna stuff up your wash routine because when you wash cloth nappies, you need to have a certain amount of nappies to put through the wash to ensure they have the right loading and they can actually get properly clean when they go through your machine. So with that in mind, here's how we do cloth nappies out and about. Like anyone who's changing a baby, you throw out your portable change mat. This is, I think, I got this as a baby shower gift, baby gear, I think it's from Big W. You have a wet bag for your cloth nappies. This is a double-sided one, which is great. So it has a compartment where we keep our clean nappies and then a compartment where we keep our dirty nappies. We also have two separate ones that we use when this one is being washed because you do throw them in the wash occasionally. And then we'll have one bag for clean and one bag for dirty, super simple. So in our clean pocket, we have two of our pocket cloth nappies. We use Eco Naps ex exclusively, having tried a bunch of brands and got rid of all the rest because they weren't doing as good of a job. These ones have two bamboo insets that are layered 
and then a stay dry layer over the top and they fasten on just like a disposable does but with clips instead of sticky tabs. Um, yeah, I can't rate these highly enough. We've been going strong in these since Violet was five weeks old and they are holding up amazingly. So we carry two of those for any given outing. If we're going out, you know, on a really short trip and I need space in the bag for something else, I might take one out. If we're going out for a whole day, I might add a nappy or two. So two of those and then a bunch of wipes. I usually carry about six cloth wipes. I use one for a change uh, for a wet nappy and I could use maybe four for a dirty nappy if it's a bad one. Um, she's just kind of started toilet training a bit for that side of things, so that's made things easier. And then I've actually got in here space for the dirty nappies. So when you take a nappy off, you would wipe with these. Now, some people put their clean cloth wipes in a container of water and take that out and about with them. I don't do that because you actually have to think about how long the, can, the wipes have been in the water. Obviously, if something's sitting in kind of tepid water for a while, there's the potential for it to become a bit gross and moldy. Too much effort um, in my mind. So if you haven't got somewhere with a tap that you can just wet the cloth wipes, I just tip my drink bottle up onto it. it does the job perfectly fine. You take off your dirty nappy, you roll it up, one I preferred earlier <laughs> and you can snap it shut just like a disposable if you need to stuff it in your dirty section of the bag and replace with your clean one and you're all done obviously when you get home you have to take the nappy apart and put it in your wash routine if you're somewhere and you have a dirty one you might want to be able to sort of tip it into a, into a toilet but you know you can just wrap it up um, it's really usually not that big of a deal and we've never had any issues doing it that way. So I hope that if you're a cloth nappy family or you're somebody who's considering cloth nappies, that gives you a bit of confidence to say that it really is really easy. Um, and I think with cloth, it's one of those things that you just commit to. And even more so, I know for us with Violet being our first and only child, we've kind of put ourselves in the position where we don't know any differently. So it's our normal and therefore it's super easy. If you're moving over from using disposables, it might seem a little bit intimidating, but I can promise that in terms of cost, even with buying probably on the more expensive end of nappies, it absolutely pays off and the environmental benefits you know, are absolutely massive. Yes, you do use more water and more energy to wash the nappies, but compared to maybe 5,000 nappies in landfill over the course of your child's life, you're still doing pretty well. Uh, so that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Thank you so much for bearing with me and watching and stick around for more videos on minimalism, organization and family life. See you next time.